When biologists confront the complexity of cellular respiration, they feel compelled to treat it schematically. While schematics are a route to understanding, models are only a pale reflection of the heavy traffic of energy pathways. It takes some startling facts to remind us of the cell's collective power. On any given day, the average person turns over 40 kilograms of ATP. During strenuous activity, your cells turn on the afterburner and use half a kilogram of ATP per minute. From the twitch of a nerve to the locomotion of the entire organism, ATP provides the driving energy. The contraction of a muscle is a case in point. In a muscle, each cell contains numerous bundles. The bundles consist of two kinds of protein. Actin and myosin, arranged in alternating layers. Reaching out from each myosin filament are spherical heads bound to the receptors on the actin filament. When a muscle cell is stimulated, ATP molecules move to the spherical heads and cause each head to let go of the actin filament. The ATP then releases its energy, forming ADP and a phosphate group. Fusion of energy pivots the head, which then binds further down the actin filament. The act of binding knocks out the ADP and phosphate group, and the head, immediately wrenched to its original position, tugs the actin filament along with it. As long as mitochondria provide a constant supply of ATP, in real time, billions of actin filaments pull together simultaneously to flex the muscle. Ah, but what happens when we overexert ourselves? The circulatory system fails to deliver a sufficient supply of oxygen to the muscle cells. As the oxygen level diminishes in the cells, oxidative phosphorylation starts to wind down, providing its last burst of energy. Now, while glycolysis can provide a trickle of energy, the shortage of oxygen creates yet another problem for the system. Or to be more exact, the electron transport chain. Remember that oxygen's main role is to remove electrons from the end of the chain. Without oxygen, the chain begins to back up. NADH is not used, and NAD plus can't be recycled. There's the rub. Glycolysis needs a constant supply of NAD plus to continue the production of ATP. Still, suffering from oxygen impairment, cellular respiration can resort to other strategies. Normally, pyruvate heads off towards the Krebs cycle. However, when oxygen is scarce, an enzyme reacts with pyruvate and NADH, producing NAD plus and lactic acid. 
the NAD Plus feeds back to glycolysis and ensures a limited supply of ATP. It's an elegant solution. And it fills the oxygen void. But there is a price to be paid. The buildup of lactic acid in the muscles creates the burning sensation experienced by athletes. After a few minutes rest, though, oxygen metabolizes the lactic acid and breathes new life back into the muscles. If exertion was a problem, so is overindulgence. When you consume too much glucose, the liver cells undergo yet another type of adaptation. An excess of glucose leads to a surplus of ATP. This excess of ATP triggers an enzyme, which strings together the acetyl units of acetyl-CoA, making fatty acids. Now one reaps the harvest of fatty acids, a bounty of fat. of us, and we decide to diet. Dieting is a way of metabolizing unwanted fat to glycerol and fatty acids. The glycerol becomes PGAL and enters the glycolytic pathway. For the fatty acids, they're converted into acetyl-CoA, which then stream into the Krebs cycle. Under drastic diets, all fats will be metabolized, and the body turns in on itself and begins to devour its own proteins. As proteins are metabolized, byproducts are channeled into cellular respiration pathways. Clearly, burning up proteins is akin to burning your own life raft. the human body remains resilient and robust because of its inquisitive energy pathways. When we study cellular respiration, we sometimes forget how resourceful cells are. Step back for a moment and you'll realize that the collective behavior of cells is an affirmation of the driving force of life itself. <laughs> 